Hi, okay, so today we're going to look at how to run the Microsoft um, equivalent of Orca um, that's available as an open source LLM on Hugging Face on your local machine. So before we get into it, there's a couple of things you need. I've got them listed here. I'm using Visual Studio Code, um, there's a download link, and then I'm using Python version 3.9, and there's some links there to the downloads page on, on the Python website and then the particular version that I'm using there for your reference as well. And you're going to need some disk space. This takes up quite a lot of space. In my case, more or less or approximately 30 gigabytes of disk space. Now, we'll jump into the code in a minute. Um, let's first just look at what it is that we're doing. So you're probably familiar with the term Microsoft Orca. Um, it's a new AI model that can mimic other large AI models such as ChatGPT4 and in some instances even outperform ChatGPT4, but it uses a much smaller training set, which is amazing. There is a paper published on um, Orca um, with a lot of figures and examples and test cases um, and also case studies on how it performs with different kinds of problem solving. I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, what we look at here is what model we are currently using. And the one that we are using here is called the Orca Mini 7B. And this one is um, from Hugging Face from PSM Athur. So um, this is the model that we're going to be using. There is some example implementation code on the page. But off the bat, that doesn't um, work straight away. So there's a couple of things we need to do. And that's why I thought I'd make this video and share the source code. We hope that you're enjoying the content and there's more to come, so stay tuned. In order for us to continue producing videos and helpful content and informative content such as this one, we need your support. And you can support us by hitting the subscribe button down here somewhere. We really appreciate that and that keeps us going. Thanks. So once I copy and paste the code um, from the hugging, the, the hugging Face page into my Visual Studio Code environment, you'll notice I've got um, Python 3.9.13.64 bit running there at the bottom. And I've created the main um, Python file that's going to contain the source code. It's just a couple of lines, not that much to follow, so it makes it quite easy. The first thing is that you need to get set up is, of course, all the requirements. So in my case, um, I already had most of them installed, but I had to update and change some of those configurations and installation versions. Um, and I had some trouble getting that set up properly. The first one that you would need is Torch. The next one is Langflow. With Langflow, you should also have the dependencies installed for Hugging Face Hub, uh, among others. Um, in which case, I received an issue um, later on when I tried to install the transformers that I've got mismatching versions and etc. So it took a bit of back and forth to get that sorted, but mine got sorted. I hope for you it goes a bit smoother. Um, you'll need Accelerate and then you also need to install the GitHub transformers. And in my first attempt, I set the tokens um, to variable instead of CUDA. Um, I set that to CPU. I was trying, trying to run it straight from the CPU. Um, if you decide to do it through CPU, you also have to change the float 16 variable here for um, the torch D type to float 32. That's very important. Another thing that is not in the source or the sample code or the implementation code in Hungry Face is you need to create also, you need to specify the all float folder where um, the uh, pre-trained models can be offloading files and you'll actually see in my example it's actually done that there's quite a lot of information that goes in there so um, you need to also specify that in my case all I did is I added the additional parameter in the from pre-trained call that says offload folder and I just called it offload right so that is everything minus it to CUDA oh, by the way when you do decide to go for CUDA, you have to make sure that you've got the correct Torch environment installed. So in my case, um, I used CUDA version 11.8. That's the latest version that is supported um, from CUDA. So, um, well, from PyTorch, actually. So if you first head over to PyTorch, you'll notice that when you start running through the um, installed PyTorch settings, 
then it allows you to um, handle two compute platforms, 11.7 .7 and 11.8 .8 on Windows using pip. So, so that is the only two environments that I, you know, found compatible. I did try the latest one of CUDA, which was 12.1. Um, it didn't work, so I had to uninstall that and then install the CUDA um, 11.8 toolkit, and then everything started to work, which is great. Um, I would also like to mention that if you try the CPU version of this, it will take quite a long time to run. Um, it's extremely slow. So, um, you know, the GPU is um, the recommended method in this case. All right, so we'll wait for that to run. In the meantime, you can actually see that we've set the model path there to that 7B model on Hugging Face. And if we jump back here, this is what it looks like. You can read more about it here. And it's important to note that this is not a model produced by Microsoft. Rather, it's following the instructions and the methodology, methodologies and the theory as it was published in this paper by Microsoft. Um, but it works. Um, it's yielding decent results. And while we wait for the checkpoints to restore, um, I'll run you through the code briefly. And, and uh, when you run this for the first time, of course, it's going to be downloading that 7B model um, onto your local machine. And that might take some time. It's going to load six portions of about 4.8 gigabytes each onto your local machine. And then it'll expand that or offload that into the offload folder. So the first run will take even longer. Um, so here we've set up basic parameters in order to um, be able to communicate with the language model. You can see mine is loaded and ready. So we've got a function here to generate text. Um, there's some uh, on the fly prompting that is happening that we've set up here. Um, we've got the token set up there to run on, on the GPU. Um, and then all of the additional parameters we need for that function. Then I've just created a main, main function here so we can provide some user inputs. Um, when it's ready, it's, it's ready. And then we can start typing. And when we type exit, it will exit. So let's start. And I'm going to ask, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything else? And let's see what happens. Now, I like to watch the performance on the machine spiking as we run this. So um, you'll notice this takes a bit of computing time. I don't have the fastest computer, so um, it does have a GPU, but um, it's only a GTX 1070 card. But you can actually see it spiking here and it's starting to really um, work on processing this information, responding and answer. So we'll give that a second to complete. Okay, finally, there we go. So that took quite some time um, and a lot of resources, probably because I'm recording the screen also, and I don't have a supercomputer. But uh, anyway, it gave us a response. So it's saying the phrase, the meaning of life, the universe, and everything is a popular phrase that refers to the ultimate question of the meaning of life and the universe, which is, of course, from the Jackers Guide to the Galaxy and Douglas Adams. And it's providing that response back to us. Um, it's very interesting, very accurate, and very cool that we can run these models locally. Does it outperform GPT um, in its entirety at this stage running a local model? I would say no, um, but it is super impressive and really nice to be able to experiment with these models and actually run them locally and put them through um, the tests. So I hope that was helpful to you. Let me know um, and have fun coding. Okay, bye.